everyone, and welcome to a review. Today we're going to be looking at good old studio series, Constructicon number 37, Rampage, I guess? Rampage slash Whiplash slash Skipjack slash Whipmaster. <laughs> he has four names, kind of. There's also a yellow version of him, which... I'm pretty sure it was an animation error, but, oh, it's a separate character. They're just like twins or whatever. <laughs> and I'm also, in honor of him having four names, I have filmed this video four times. This is the fourth time. It just, I've either gotten interrupted or things have happened. I made a bunch of mistakes. Some footage got corrupted and it was just like, so much crazy stuff has happened, but we're here now, and we're happy, and we're recording him. So real quick, I guess we can take a look at the box. Now then, I want to talk about the box a little bit more later, because I actually have some interesting stuff to say about the box. Uh, for now, we'll just take a look at that pretty cool art. He was my favorite Constructicon as a kid. Probably still is. He's a quote unquote pretty violent guy, according to some of his bios. There's Devi and his back. This is this is the part that's interesting. This this picture, these two pictures right here, we'll get back to that. At the top. And then his background, as you can see, is very similar to um what's his butts. I'll just pick it out real quick. There it is. Pretty cool. I like it. I like it. I thought it was a cool setting. I kind of have a soft spot for Revenge of the Fallen, I'm not going to lie. Those instructions, we don't really care about those, do we? So, here he is. I did something weird. I don't know what I did, but something... Does not look quite right. Be right back. <clears throat> all right, nothing happened. This, nothing happened at all. It's exactly how you saw it before. Cough, cough. So he is a little red bulldozer. And I think he looks pretty cool. For most angles, in my opinion at least, he looks pretty good. From that angle, not so much. From the side, kind of, sort of, you can kind of shove this off as, you know, oh, machine detail. But there, it's just, oh, gappy. And then from the back, <clears throat> things get a little strange. But, I mean, besides his head, I feel like it's actually not too bad for most angles. And <laughs> paint matching is a little weird. I just spat all over my camera. You can see this is, like, kind of a rusty steel-looking color. And then the rest of this is like kind of a toyish orange. Uh, the paint matching was a little off, I imagine, because sometimes, I, I think when they paint on black, they use a very similar color to this. Like the paint matching wasn't terrible. It's just they didn't really test it on black. So then when they paint it onto the black, it looks like a totally different shade. It's not showing up as much on camera, but in person, it is quite distracting. I definitely like the, the pusher part. I like to call these things pusher machines, I don't know why. But this part, the actual dozer, looks very nice. It's kind of, you know, scaly, if that makes sense, down here. And the paint's pretty nice. It's this nice kind of metallic-y paint. It has some awkward holes. And this port, which I think is just for like blast effects. I don't have any, but I'm pretty sure that's all it's for. Eh, it looks a little weird to me. It's honestly a little distracting. It's also connected to a caster wheel. And then it has these two wheels in the back. This one is being a little difficult. So it can roll pretty well. And since it has that kind of caster wheel in the front, you can turn it and boop boop and beep beep and do all the sorts of things you would like 
and I believe that's about it. So why don't we get into his Combiner Devastator mode, which is actually more complicated than getting him into robot mode, because he's almost a shell former. I don't. I don't want to quite see as a shell former, but you just kind of, to get him into robot mode, you just kind of unfold him. But to get him into the combiner mode, you have to twist things. You know what I'm saying? So to start off with, you're gonna to want to untab his treads, which I think is pretty cool. I like how they did that. And then take this off, which will become his base. Not a part former, I swear. And then, you can kind of do this however you want, but I just used to do it like this. I like to kind of disconnect these pieces, then swivel this up, close these panels, lift this up, and then kind of flip his head up to there. And that's about all with that. Now you're going to want to flip the top of his, his treads, which is a little tricky, and I honestly thought I broke it the first time I did this. So you're going to want to swivel this part down, move this out of the way, and then lift this piece up. And that's pretty important because you're going to be bending the heck out of these pieces if you don't lift that up. So now then you're going to want to kind of straighten it out a little bit, rotate it uh, counterclockwise, and then kind of move that out of the way. Then you're going to want to move this down, flip that flip this all the way around and then tuck it in like that and then rotate it and you're gonna kind of have to flex pieces a little bit here which is a little scary but you're just gonna want to kind of sort of line everything up come on work with me Urgh, there we go and then rinse and repeat so flip all this out of the way, lift this up, turn it clockwise, flip that down, flip that out, turn it around, tuck it in, and then uh, flex the pieces, and then these, as you can see, will snap together. And there's two ways you can do this part. You can either put these up like this, which I think is the official way, or kind of tuck them under like this, which is the way I honestly prefer to do it. And these you just kind of straighten out and then get this part and you can either have it like this, so it kind of has like a toe, or you can flip it around like that, so it's kind of more, almost like a hoof put the bowl and bulldozer I guess and snap those back and then so it'll match I don't have long hole but so it'll match long holes uh, height it's just kind of and I'll also cover up his head and there you go there is his foot mode and he is the left foot of devastator that's about it for that. Not too exciting. There's Tahir next to it. So I guess I will turn him back into his bulldozer mode and we can get him into robot mode. So here we have him in his bulldozer mode. And again, it's pretty easy to get him back into to get him into robot mode, which is kind of surprising. So you want to start the same way by untabbing his treads and then taking off the base and then this time we want to do some very complex transformation so you're going to want to pay very close attention you're going to take this piece and you're going to flip it like that so that's his base done now then <clears throat> gotta say now then I have a quota I have to say it 50 times per video you want to untab that so you kind of want to just swivel that down flip that up then you want to take this same thing so yeah just flip that down and rotate that up then untab these and I'll just show you real quick you can see a little tab there a little tab on his finger so there you go pretty cool unfold his arms flip that 
and then you want to take his tail out and that's all you do for that I must say the mechanical alliance version which is like a modded version basically I, I like a lot better when it comes to the the booty area because he has this huge thing sticking out and now you can fit stuff in there which is cool so you could have someone in there piloting the bulldozer which I totally would have done as a young child um I don't know it's very sh it's it's kind of short to me because in the movie he has more of like a snake tail he looks more snake like and this to me just looks very chunky and kind of awkward and the mechanical alliance one what happens is you fold this back and then you fold the, a bigger one of these out and then it uh, splits and then it kind of just is like a nesting doll and it's actually very reminiscent of the new Cyclonus that just came out from Kingdom the super rare one that you can't get anywhere um, like his nose cone it's very similar to his nose cone so they can do it they just didn't for this I feel like that would have worked really well Instead of putting the rubber nose cone at the very, very end, they could have just had a port like this. I kind of wish they did that, because honestly, this, to me, looks a little weird. But from the front, I think it looks super cool. Now then, again, got to get the quota. You want to flip that around. Flip that down. And kind of straighten that out if you want. And then this piece, you're going to want to kind of diagonally take it out because it's actually tabbed in from the top right there and from the side so you kind of have to like flex it out a little bit if that makes sense and then do the same with the other side oh wait to, according to the instructions you want to flip that out yeah eh, I'm not a big fan of it that's fine though so same thing flip that flip that Take that out and then flip it all the way around and bang bada boom flippity doo we have rampage slash skipjack slash whip masters slash whip lash I think that's all of them and did I get them right I don't know and to be 100% honest I don't care the yellow one is technically skipjack by the way. So I guess we'll get your boy Tahu out. He's a pretty similar size to Tahu. It's kind of hard to tell just because he's kind of weirdly proportioned, but they're very similar in size. Very similar. Now before I talk about what I like about this fine gentleman, I want to talk about something I don't like again, and it's around the backside again. I don't like how the dozer part is just chilling, you know? It's just on his back right there. And to me it's very obvious and I, I kind of wish you could take it off. I know that's a little part formery, but I wish you could just take it off. Maybe this was the base. You could use this as a base. So it would be like that. I don't I don't know. I wish you could take it off, honestly, because it's very distracting to me. I thought this guy was kind of he was so creepy in the movie. And like in the promotional stuff because he was so weird and snake-like and slender and he still has a little bit of that from the front and like his arms have the same kind of presence but from like any other angle he starts getting a little little chonk little chonky so he is pretty well detailed I just want to take a minute to look at all of his pretty nice details he has a pretty cool pretty clean Face. Not all the figures have super clean paint apps on the face, but he definitely does. See, so he has some red, silver, and black, and yeah, some silver going down here. This piece is not painted, a little weird, but you know, I guess they ran out of budget. And you can see some nice silver paint along here, some more on the back. Very nice. This piece is kind of unpainted, but I'm totally fine. And he has these little danger, these little caution prints 
unlike his armpit, which are a little hard to see, but you should be able to get a glimpse of them. And just some more silver. Pretty nice stuff here. And since we're talking about the paint, why did I throw this box on the floor? <laughs> oh man. I wanted to talk about the box again because, as you can see, the paint apps are a little bit different on the box. They're actually quite a bit different, in my opinion. It's kind of... Oh no. Oh no. Me broke. Me broke studio. I accidentally erased the light with Zahando. We'll just keep the glare for now. We'll do it. It's like... Yeah, it's a lens flare. It's fine. It's great. People do that all the time. People get paid big big money in Hollywood to do that. So as you can see, a lot of the paint apps are a little bit different. So we'll start, I guess, with this. So the port is red on the box, but then gray on the figure. And I actually think red... I don't know. Here it looks better. There it looks a little... It looks worse. And then the pistons are black on the box. I think it would have been a lot better if they were black because... They're kind of lacking paint, in my opinion. They look a little bare bones. And then a lot of stuff in here is supposed to be black, and it's like the orange, like everything else, which isn't a huge deal to me. And then a lot of stuff like this is supposed to be black. A lot of stuff around his arms, you can see where it's red, is supposed to be black. Um, the wheels here were supposed to be black, which I think would have been better because it blends in more with the treads. I find that a little odd. And then I believe that's it. The wheel up here was going to be black originally, but I just find that very interesting. And I wonder why they did that. Like, oh, also all of this was supposed to be black here, which I actually kind of feel like silver looks a little bit better. I don't know. I find that very interesting. Like, I wonder why they did that. Because some stuff was budget with the paint, but I don't know why all the small, like, why this whole sp sprig, basically, of pieces is gray instead of black. I, j I find that very interesting. I don't know why that happened. So, I guess real quick we can talk about articulation. He has a good amount of it. So we'll start from the bottom. I'll just take the base off. I accidentally flipped that like that. So this part can wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And then he has some waist spinach right there. Can go all the way around. Pretty tight joint. And then right here, you can get a bend, which is a little over 90. It's like one click over 90 degrees. And he also has kind of like an ab crunch, which is pretty, pretty good, pretty versatile. So you can get him into some more like crazy poses. I accidentally knocked that off. <laughs> His neck is pretty good. You can go up about that far. It would be nice if you could go a little bit further, but that's not a huge deal. And you can look down very far. Weird stuff goes on when he looks down too far, but I don't know why you'd want to pose him like that. And you can look side to side that much. Not a lot there, not a lot. And then his head is on a ball joint, so you can look all sorts of crazy directions. You can get him into some like demonic poses. And then it can kind of swivel back and forth, and I believe, yeah, you can look down and up. You can look up pretty far, actually. About as much as you would need. And then arms. He kind of has shoulder swivel. And then another swivel up here, which can kind of, it can't quite go 360 because of this piece but more than you would ever really need. And then, of course, it's on a hinge sort of deal. And it's 
pretty strict 90, so he can T-pose on you. And you have another swivel here, which very clean 360 there. And as you saw this piece, it could go up and down. And then these fingers can flop around. And that you can do that, which I don't know why you would want to. And then his treads have three points of articulation. So you have that one, which is pretty good. That one, which is also pretty good. And this one, which is not too shabby. So you can curl it up, go in that far, do that, all sorts of things. And then his fingers can go do all sorts of crazy things. I think, you know, basically as much as you would need. This one can go all sorts of crazy directions. And then his finger can do all sorts of crazy things. So you can kind of point and poke and do anything you'd really want him to do. And that's basically it for articulation. One last thing to cover real quick. This guy has a lot of stuff to talk about. I can't get him on the base. There we go. The pistons here can actually come out. So you just take it out. Pretty easy to pop in and out. I accidentally already... As I say, they're pretty easy. I can't get it back in. Uh, I accidentally knocked one out. And this one is actually... Which one is it? This one is super malformed. So you can see it's pretty cool looking. It kind of has a detailed cylinder in there. But then this one is like all weird. As you can see, this one has very nice right angles, but this one's all like soft. And then the cylinder is all wonky. I don't know why that happened. A little disappointing. But you can use these as his guns, which is nice. So you just plug them into these little slot oh, whoops, these little slots right here. And this one's malformed so it does not work too well. But the other one is normal. So you can plug it in. And that works fine. I mean I I guess you would want to kinda of do that. I feel like it doesn't add much to his overall presence and silhouette. I mean, it's fine if you're trying to like kill some boomers, if you're trying to capture some boomers, I guess, and hold them as ransom, but I feel like it doesn't really add a whole lot. You kind of have to, you have to lift it up really far to like get it to eye level. So I, I appreciate that it's there for sure. And it also, you know, weapon storage and incorporation is always very much accepted in my eyes. But they're not super great. I've never I've never displayed them like that. So that is all I have to say about him. It's also kind of sad that you can't kind of get his treads more in the palm of his hand. You can do that, but they're always going to be kind of off to the side. So you're always kind of having them in the same sort of pose, like pretty often. You're going to see a lot of poses. He's going to be in a lot of like these poses, which is fine. I mean, that's a cool pose, but you're not going to get very much more out of them. I think he's definitely a very cool figure. He's like my favorite Constructicon out of the the Bay Bay universe. And yeah, he look he looks really good. He is he has a lot of problems, honestly. Like his back is a little weird. His tread articulation is a little strange. His paint, I don't know what's going on with that. There's there's some things that bother me about the figure, honestly. But it's still a pretty cool figure, and from this from this angle, he looks super awesome. Thirty dollars, I guess that's fine comparatively. Comparatively, I think it's a good price. I mean, it's still a little price to me, but I'm a bit of a cheapskate, so what can I say? 
anything else, I'm gonna cut this part out. I'll say like Wraith Best Girl so I know to cut it out. I think that's all I want to say. Okay. Oh. I guess all I have to say is that's all I have to say. So, peace out.